Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all, to all of you to participate in the third uh, World Congress of uh, Bioregion according to Paul Schmidt. Uh, my name is Tan Ek Chuan. I am from Malaysia. Actually, I am uh, I am Malaysian Chinese. So I always put my name, my la, my surname in front. So my la, my surname is Tan. So at first, I would like to thanks to organizer to give me an opportunity to uh, share my experience to all of you, and I choose the the topic of the on the, the, the pain study. And my presentation is more focused on the clinical uh, application. So I think this morning, uh, you already heard uh, all the speaker uh, focus on the clinical trial. So my, my presentation is more on the application. So I hope I can share my something my some experience to you uh, so the topic is application of uh, bioregion according to postmix on clinical pain of the chikungunya and dengue fever so why uh, i would like to uh, introduce myself a bit Actually, I am a veterinarian, uh, and I got my uh, uh, master degree in 1999. And uh, after that, I had an uh, episode of my life. Uh, is something happened of, of me. So I will tell you the story later. And because of this, I uh, further study on the homeopathic medicines and the bioresonance. And uh, the final, finally, we, I uh, continue my study in the integrated, uh, integrated medicines. So before that, I have 12 years uh, veterinarian service in uh, Taiwan, in China. And after that, I come back, came back from Taiwan to continue my veterinarian practice. And one incident happened to me. So because of the, my, I got a liver problem. So I switched my veterinarian practice to uh, bioresident bio and uh, homeopathic. So we uh, combine all together into the traditional and complementary uh, med medicines. So recently, I also have given some uh, lecture on in the integrated medicines, and the I still learning and still sharing, and I hope you, uh, all of you, can get something today. At first, I would like to tell you the reason to link to bioresonance to according to Paul Schmidt. Uh, I would like to show you the chart on my liver function test in 2004. So in, in May of the 2004 until the October, so you can see the uh, blue, you can see the blue line, the blue line, the peak is a 3000 something. And the normal range of the liver function test uh, AST, ALT is in the below 40. So it means the figures of the ALT is a 80 times up from the normal range. So that time I got shocked and the symptom of me is uh, very fatigued and uh, cannot sleep, cannot eat, and got jaundice. Also. So after that, uh, so I went to see the specialist, uh, the liver specialist. The specialist asked me to go home and rest and take the medicines. And based on my knowledge of the medical, the, the liver function that resided not admit, asked me to admit in hospital. I may be waiting to die. So my sister will introduce me. You have to looking for the second opinion to 
to treat the problem. So I went to Penang to see my, my now see my wife, Dr. Lin. So he gave me the different way, the alternative uh, treatments. The one is uh, the, the main in, uh, treatment with uh, bioresilient according to Poshmish and also the homopathic and uh, some supplement. So you can see I'm getting well from the uh, May, middle of May and slowly, slowly getting well in a few months. So from this incident, I switched my veterinary service to and further study on homopathic and bioresonance. So this is a reason I linked to the bioresonance. And now I will... I, we, ha we have uh, established the uh, company, Rayonic Biomedical Sendirian Bahas, is as an uh, official distributor of uh, Rayonic um, uh, Biomedical GmbH. And also we have our own medical center in the, in, located in Georgetown, Penang. Uh, at first, I would like to brief about the dengue and chikungunya epidemiology. So the, the I would like to point out the, uh, the 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 epidemic in the world, the in the past twenty years. In first, uh, in two zero zero, they have a five thousand five thousand five five hundred thousand more than five hundred cases, and then they jump up to the two two point four million in 10 years, and next 10 years, it's jumped to the fourth 2.2 million. And then the, the, the death rate, we jumped to the 4,000 something. So the, the cases have been, the report is increased day by day. But from the, these figures, the actual numbers of the dengue cases is, is, uh, is unreported. And, and many cases are also misdiagnosed as other fibro illness. So you see, you, you see that the, the figures actually is more than that. And for the chikungunya, you can see from the map of the world, the country and the territory uh, where I have chikungunya cases report has been reported in the dark green area. And this area is belong to the tropical and the subtropical area. It means it has hot weather uh, area. So most of this country uh, report has been report the chikungunya cases. So my place is here, so it's included. And we'll come back to Malaysia, the dengue cases is in the 2020. We have uh, um, 56,000 uh, cases in, the, uh, in two, 2020 and 88 the death reports. And the uh, health authority uh, expected the dengue fever will increase after in the June to September to 2020. So in, the, in that period, a lot of cases have been reported. So in you can you can see on the table in one week and last year and this year last year is uh, we have a service. in one week we have a report six thousand something report the cases and this year one thousand three hundred something so it's the this is the big season of the chikung uh, the dengue cases and the chikungunya epidemic epidemiology in Malaysia in weekly we. In two, 2020, in December, in one week, we have reported the two, uh, 2,536 cases, and mostly it's from Perak and Penang. It's the Perak is the nearby the Penang state. So my, our, our, our medical center is located in Penang. So I just will show you how serious of the cases of chikungunya here. And the following uh, slide, I would like to 
brief about the dengue virus. So the dengue virus is same as a corona virus is considered as belong to the RNA virus. It's under a prairie virus. But I would like to point out the dengue virus is, have a four serotype, means there's a dengue one, two, three, and four. It means they have a different serotype and the infection lead to immune immunity to that serotype only. So it means they are not cross immunity. So when you if you got the dengue one, it's possible you will get the dengue one, uh, two, three, or four in the future. So this is a, 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 a number of cases with increased reasons. And the chikungunya is also uh, uh, RNA virus, but belong to the uh, toga virus. And the chikungunya virus has consists of three related genotype. There is to have uh, Asia, East, Central, South Africa, and West Africa. So they have a three genotype. Also, it's the same as the uh, chikung uh, dengue viruses. And the problem of uh, this uh, disease is the mosquito, because the, this both diseases is a uh, vector born disease. And the natural vector is a mosquito. So the mosquito, these two types of the mosquito is uh, Addis uh, aegypti and Addis abopictus. The, the, the size of the, this, uh, the, the, the mosquitoes is quite similar, but the color is a little bit different and the, the face is a little bit different. So when someone is bitten by the mosquito, they will think about the chikungunya or dengue is to make a people more scary. So sometimes you see the black one, they will think about the chikungunya. And when you see the little, little bit light one, you will think about the dengue. Actually, both of them is a are the, the, the vectors uh, is a whole natural host of the this uh, by the, uh, the virus and the symptom of the the dengue I would like to point out is the same as uh, the chikungunya so the the dengue got a fever and mostly the symptom is a pain. But the dengue is more uh, dangerous than the, the chikungunya because the, 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 dengue, the dengue will lead to the civil, uh, the, the civil signs because of the, the blood. The blood uh, platelet will leaking and make the hemorrhage of the of the, uh, the, uh, the to to become the uh, the more serious and severe organ impairments is uh, will, will will kill the people. Oh. and this is, I would like to point out the the uh, dengue classification. If the deng the dengue have a this all the syn the, the syndrome or, or signs. Mostly the pain and rashes. It become to the severe dengue. They will cause the bleeding and to end up with the organ impairment. So this is because a lack in danger. And the sign of and the symptom of chikungunya. The symptom uh, symptom uh, you. It's a uh, very similar with uh, dengue, and most common symptom are fever and joint pain. So, also the other may include uh, headache, muscle pain, jo uh, joint swelling, and rash. And chikungunya does not often result in death, but the symptom can be severe or disturbing. 
and the symptom will be uh, uh, persist or uh, remains mm, to few months or, the, or maybe few years in the chronic pain. So today the topic, we are focused on the pain. So I chose that these two diseases and the outbreak in Malaysia, we received the patient suffering with the, the joint, the, the chronic pain or even acute pain. So we, we do the some we, we, we do the treatment and for the patient with the bioresonance. And we can compare to the to both diseases, the symptoms. So I would like to point out the back pain and fever, even eye pain, headache, muscle pain, and joint pain. This is very common of the, this, uh, the both diseases. And in this slide, what difference I would like to point it out is the chikungunya, up to 10% of the patient will develop the chronic joint pain. This is, is uh, the problem we, uh, we, we, we receive from the patients. And arthritis is for the dengue. It's, the dengue is normally not cause the arthritis, but in chikungunya, we are, this is very common. So the, the disease durations in the dengue may be a few weeks, but the chikungunya, we do know, because they will persist in the body quite long term with the chronic pain. So for the, this, uh, bo both of these illness, the disease, the conventional management is, is currently no medication to kill dengue and chikungunya. And also no vaccine to prevent. And the main treatment is the uh, symptomatic relief. So what is a symptomatic relief? Uh, usually used is a, uh, the on bed rest and the fruit to prevent dehydration because you got a fever. And the take the medicine such as uh, acetaminophen or paracetamol to reduce the fever and pain. This is uh, like the painkiller. And one thing I have to point out is that do not take aspirin or an others and non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug until the dengue can be ruled out to reduce the risk of the bleeding because the aspirin will cause the bleeding is more worse. So it is quite dangerous. So the severe dengue the required to hospitalize for the hospital management because the uh, the lack of the the plasma or the uh, the platelet leaking so the the cost of the baby is a is the main issue of the dengue so in integrative medicines uh, integrate integrative measurements our patient it means uh, who is our patient to, to come to us. Uh, those who seek for the uh, holistic therapy and uh, those who cannot take the allopathic medicines and those who feel treated from the conventional medicines and those who seek for the complementary medicines, uh, even the cancer patient. So mostly the, the type of the, the patients that come to us. Actually, we uh, practice the integrated medicines because we, we, are, we cannot involve the, the conventional medicines. So in the blue block is our service, include uh, bio resonance according to Postmich and homopathic and uh, TCM acupuncture, and Ayurvedic medicines, the diet, and emotion control. This is, a, this is a very important. And meditations, and Reiki, Qigong, and body uh, structure, like the uh, chiropractic, the body alignment, or body destructure. So we have linked to this all uh, the service. 
So mainly we're using the bioresonance for uh, analyze and for treatment and we integrated with others uh, possibility. Uh, the method we use, the therapy principles, we, uh, we follow the Chinese uh, concept and the Chinese principle, the Chinese medicine principle. The first one is the cleansing. The second one is the regulating. The third one is renouncing and the uh, preventing. So for the cleansing, we're using the combination of the Ayurvedic, homeopathic, and uh, bioresonance and the others together to do the liver and gallbladder flushing, colon cleansing, and the blood and nerve detoxification. So I would I would uh, I would uh, introduce uh, later. And regulating is that we're using the bioresonance according to Postpitch, homeopathy, Ayurvedic, and TCM and extra. Nourishing is that most we emphasize on the diet according to your blood type. It says we follow the, the Dr. Peter Adamos from the, the book and eat right for your part. And also the nutritional and functional food and supplements. So we're using the right, the real, real flora, real best, real vita, and real soul. Uh, the, some uh, Chinese and the herb supplements together. And the prevent things is, is very important. Even if you get killed, you have also to have to maintain to prevent. So we're using the bioresonance to maintain and we will, we will do something on the building biology because this is the, another cause of the illness. So the, and the, the, the therapy procedure, we also follow, follow, follow the step by step. So at first we we're doing the testing or analyze, analysis, analysis. So the, we can send the patients of the blood sample to the lab and see the result. And we check with the rheometer, rheocom, PS10, rheocom, PS1000 polar or rare scan we apply as uh, analysis. And the detoxification, we're using the, the Ayurvedic, homeopathic, and TCM and bioresonance to do the liver flushing, liver gallbladder flushing, colon cleansing, and the blood and nerve detoxification. So after that, we will re, uh, re analyze again with the bioresonance and to find it out, the, uh, the patients or the bacteria, uh, all the pathogens, and I uh, mean, uh, like the bacteria, virus, fungi, and parasite, uh, is, uh, uh, and building biology, nutrition, and heavy metal, and extra. And the treatment and harmonizations, we, we can ap we apply the BAPH, RA, and the BAT, and integrated medicines. So test and analyze, we're using even uh, the rheometer PS10 is the, uh, the previous device and we're still using for the checking. And the latest one is the uh, rheocom PS1000 Polar 4.0. We're using the, we usually every patient we use, we have to check the full check and the real scan with, with the RA. Also, we can check with the uh, BAT system. The detoxifications and the preparations, we ap uh, apply the uh, fundamental frequency. This is our experience. So before the detox, we have to uh, give the harmonization for this B uh, FFB or in a RAW program, we can apply. And after, after the harmonization, we will prepare the concussion for the detoxification. We, we, we make the combination with the olive oil, grapefruit juice, and the homeopathic remedy, and the colon cleansing salts as a concussion for the detoxification. And this uh, remedy is combination of the uh, Ayurvedic and homeopathic 
and TCM is a Chinese, uh, uh, the traditional Chinese medicines, and the bioresident according to Porchmich. And the time of the detoxification is also very important. So we follow the Chinese medicines, uh, the meridian chart. Uh, most of the, the, the Chinese physicians are very familiar with the, this chart. And we, we have applied the drink of a concoction of the olive oil and grapefruit juice at uh, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock at midnight. So because of the meridians is work on 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock is a gold, bed, uh, gold bladder and a liver meridians. So this is a perfect time to do the detox for the liver and gold bladder. So when the concussion go to the digestive system, they will be working whole night until tomorrow morning and we apply the drink of the colon cleansing salt from uh, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock morning. So this is the colon millions is work on this time. So we do the colon detoxification. So colon detoxification, we go, the patient will go to the toilet at the morning after the breakfast. We go to the toilet and push it out. So we can collect the result here. So the detoxification, the detoxification result you can see in the basket it collected from the stove. The soft green one, the soft gold stone we call the green one, is quite uh, normal and the bigger and the in, different with the individual. And some people got the, um, the brown color, some uh, uh, some patients have got a different, different color, full color, depend on what they take. And this is uh, some uh, di undigested food. So this is uh, a result of the detoxification, so liver flushing. And after the to detoxification, it will follow up with the bioresident uh, analysis. We're using the BAPH. BAG and uh, uh, Rayocom PS1000 and Recom Rayometer, PS10, uh, also the BAT and uh, REH or Rayoskin. This is uh, my uh, the checking room in my clinic. And the treatment and harmonization is the REH uh, program. It's set up the basic the program is include the, this uh, program. So, whatever the patients got the chikungunya or tengi, we put together. So, because they so the, the syndrome and the virus is same, is uh, uh, similar. So, this is the basic, but you can you can check and you can modify it, and also you can apply it. If some uh, some cases accompany with the different syndrome like the eye system or skin system, you, the the eye pain or eye problem, you can apply at it on the program for our AH the seventy program, uh, for the example. So you can apply all this, and also we have a BAT uh, system. We also use uh, using the BAT acute program at the A33 is for the chikungunya. Uh, the, the, the treatment and harmonizing uh, that I would like to share with you. Uh, this is our medical center uh, located in Penang, in this uh, in Georgetown, the center of the city. And uh, this is our treatment room. And in, the, in addition to the, uh, the bioresident therapy and the homopathic or others uh, possibility, uh, I would like to share with you the, another the treatment is the antidote. It's because of the, our mother earth to give us the antidote in the tropical area. So the papaya and the, and the watermelon is very easy to get in the 
a tropical area. So the papaya leaf is uh, one of the, uh, the natural uh, herb or remedy to uh, treat or cure the chikungunya or dengue, very popular in the tropical area. So uh, our experience, I would like to share you, we, uh, where we recommend the patient to take the a papaya leaf a cook and boil a slow cook with uh, more than four hours and take it two to three cup a day. And also the fresh watermelon juice because the disease the diseases is related to the blood. So the watermelon juice is in the red color is good for the blood formations. And also the uh, painkiller also the uh, they can for the for the fever. So we recommend two two to three cup a day. And uh, we analyze and we collect the data to analyze with our uh, our patients. And I would like to show you it's related to pain. We collect the eighty seven cases, and we found. The chikungunya fever have a seventy four percent, and dengue fever have a fifteen percent, and uh, the other one is eleven percent. Both of them, so we analyze with the bioresonance. We uh, we find out some patients not only got dengue or chikungunya, actually they have got uh, got two virus. So this is our finding. So just share with you. And the result of the the uh, because of the result, I cannot show all the like the the this morning the stat statistics uh, result to you. I just uh, say the case report to you, and I would like to ask them to tell the. The, the truth by themselves. Uh, the patient's name, the Staffens, is from uh, Switzerland. He is uh, 65 years old and stay in Malaysia as a uh, resident uh, Malaysian second home status. And he owned his uh, heritage hotel. And last year, he got the chikungunya and dengue fever and he went the conventional the condition, not go for the conventional treatment and the, the suffering with pain. So it come to us and we find it out we got the, both of the diseases it include the chikungunya and the dengue fever. So this is a video he took before and I would like to ask her to uh, ask him to tell the truth to you. So this is a Hi, I'm Stefan, living in Penang, Malaysia. Last year in July, I got diagnosed with dengue and chikungunya. I had a fever, felt very tired, uh, had bone ache, and my right hand and right foot were quite swollen. In addition, I had a tingling, tingle sensation in my right hand fingers, which was quite annoying because it stopped me from sleeping. It made me wake up during night time. So I went to see Dr. Lim and Dr. Lim checked me with the Rhinex machine and gave me the respective programs for treatments. In addition, she also prescribed some homopathic medicine and a juice, papaya leaf juice, which I have to drink every day. I have my own Ryanex machine, so every day I treated myself with the programs and every day I was drinking this very bitter papaya leaf juice. Already after one month I felt much better. Most symptoms were gone 
and I even could do my sports, playing tennis and cycling, I could do all this again. Um, it took a bit longer to get rid of this tingle sensation in my right hand fingers. I only got rid of them uh, sometimes in December. I'm very convinced that my quite speedy recovery uh, was due to the help and diagnosis uh, by Dr. Lim. The treatment with the Ryanex machine and the Ryanex programs and also drinking the papaya leaf juice were crucial for my good recovery. Uh, big thank you goes for goes to Dr. Lim for taking such good care of me during this this uh, special time. Thank you. And uh, the second case of the test report is uh, my patient named Miss Gore. He was a retired air hostel. Uh, in fact, he, he got she got the uh, he come to us at la uh, in the January this year with uh, body st stiffness and shoulder even shoulder no pain but uh, no strength to move and the leg is just no strength and the hands is something with jog during sleep and she was diagnosed by the neuro. Uh, specialist with uh, Parkinson disease, and when she come to us with uh, the, we discovered uh, and after we analyzed with the bioresonance, we discovered she, uh, he she got he was uh, having the chikungunya infection instead of the Parkinson, uh, and she decide decide not taking the Parkinson di uh, medicines, and. At first, he came for the regular treatments for the three time, uh, three times per week, and reduced to two times per week for the three ht week, three week, and the result was never jump her her hand during a sleep, so the 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 the, the symptom is disappear, and the shoulder can move and lack more strength, and the body less digit and stiff. And finally, he, she decided not to taking the Parkinson disease uh, medicines. So this is uh, where uh, got the positive effect for uh, these patients. I would like to share with you. And the case report: the uh, a patient from um, the Ma the Ma Mahayana temple. She is a. Uh, a Buddhist nun, uh, 51 years old, and she got a chikungunya fever for a few months and come to us. And she, I would like to share with uh, you with his uh, own uh, video record. I don't know if you can hear it or not. We try again. Hi, I'm Jen Shen from the name Malaysia. Yeah, I got chicken kunya in June last year, 2020. Because of that, I was uh, experiencing fatigue, muscle pain, joint pain, and uh, memory loss. Um, I was told uh, there isn't any uh, specific uh, medicine to cure this disease uh, until this moment. But it happened that I took some uh, Chinese herbs in pure forms uh, for three months uh, just to help myself to get rid of uh, all sorts of uh, discomfort. But later on, after three months, uh, I found that my health dropped and my whole body was in edema and I always feel lassitude. Uh, 
Uh, uh, I wasn't able to worship the Buddha and uh, to practice uh, sitting meditations uh, because of my uh, food, both of my legs and ankles uh, swollen. Uh, I came to Dr. Tan and Dr. Ling uh, for the next clinic last October. Um, I spent three days a week, and uh, each time three to four hours lying on the lady chair. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I was also provided with medicines in pills and liquid form. After a week of a treatment, uh, I slowly regained my strength and uh, I was able to uh, pay worship to the Buddha. And after two months of the treatment, uh, I can sit upright and practice sitting meditation again. Uh, this improvement inspired my confidence to uh, Realnex bioresonance therapy. Week after week, my body edema slowly disappeared. Now I can walk faster and I can stay longer and pay concentration in my work and also reading. Uh, I can say that Realnex bioresonance therapy has uh, helped me to back to my normal life. Yet so far I feel that uh, I haven't recovered from my uh, memory loss. But uh, anyhow, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to uh, Dr. Tan, Dr. Lin, and uh, Ms. Slo uh, for their warm heartness, uh, which uh, already contribute to my recovery. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I just uh, share with you the testimony of uh, my patient. And uh, I would like to conclude the, the, the presentations uh, today. This is, uh, the bioresident therapy or vibrational medicine is the most effective in pain control without side effect. And then the bioresident therapy or vibrational medicines can be worked with the integrative medicines. So actually it's a very flexible to combine with the different different therapy. And I hope you can apply uh, in your practice. Thank you very much. And thank you for your patience. Yeah, thank you, Professor Tan, uh, for this very nice uh, presentation. It is, I think, for everybody, totally fascinating um, how bioresonance can work uh, uh, regarding so different diseases like um, dengue uh, fever and so on. That's really fascinating. And um, thank you so much to share with us your case reports, your, your experience um, regarding the pain reduction and uh, the relationship to different uh, diseases, especially uh, in Malaysia. Yeah, I think um, we... Oh, please. Yes, so, uh, sorry, uh, something happened in, with the video clip. I, I would like to say sorry over you. Professor Tang, this is like a wonder uh, that this will work, uh, that this can work uh, across the world, but um, uh, I think uh, this was the idea from our technic uh, department here to integrate in the video clips um, uh, on YouTube later on uh, this video with voice. Therefore, no problem. Everybody can hear this um, then on, on YouTube or on the landing page or whatever. Okay. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you so much to, oh, yeah. to, organ to organize this. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, we um, have had some questions. Is this right or not right? Yeah? Okay, um, Professor Tang, uh, yeah. we collected during the lecture from you some questions and I want to ask you these questions. 
the first one, please. Okay. The first is, in your lecture, you report that dengue fever also causes, for example, uh, headaches, muscle and joint pain. Can dengue fever be transmitted from person to person? Uh, the, dengue, the dengue fever, you cannot transmit by person to person because this is a vector horse disease. So the virus has to transmit, transmit by the mosquito. So the mosquito is played an important role to transmit the virus. So the person got the virus, but they cannot contact, even the contact, it cannot go to their body. They have to pass, transmit by the mosquito. Yeah, and einfach. So eh? And the special <laughs> mosquito is <laughs> not all, spe all species of the mosquito, especially Aedes, the mosquito Aedes. Only two, the, the two species of the vi uh, uh, mosquito can transmit. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay. No, I think uh, this is clear to, to everybody okay. that um, especially dengue fever can only transmit it from the mosquito or not from person to person. Um, the second question, do we have a second question? Okay, the second one. Um, I would like to know something, something about the chikungunya virus. In the cause of global warming, the mosquito that transmits the virus is also appearing in Italy and France, for example. Should one always test the virus under RAH 22.64 on patients, even not showing the corresponding symptoms? Yeah. Uh, uh, because we, we check with the patient with the, the RA or uh, in RAH uh, or BAPS, and also with the BAT, we we find some patient from the 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 virus from the patients. Uh, the resonance is will, will uh, appear uh, because of the the our our findings. We got the, this chikungunya okay. mm -hmm. uh, virus, so we treat with the program. So. We always check with the, this at uh, 22.64, even the BAT, or we, we, we check from this. Even the, the, they're not sure with the symptom, they also we will give the treatment too. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. But, um, uh, Professor Tang, we have here this, the uh, another question uh, I want to give to you. Um, in the presentation, you show how to eliminate gallstones. For example, I personally have uh, severe problems with gallstones. Is there a program or bioresonance therapy that I can use to prevent the formation of gallstones? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, actually, we did before. Uh, we combined with the the the, the, the detoxifications, and they are we have a, a program, especially for the liver and the, the liver and the gallbladder. So the you can using the RAH program on the liver and also the gallstone. Okay. To aid okay. Or prevention, mm -hmm. and okay. I would like to give you some tips on the ghost stone because uh, most of the ghost stone is stuck in the liver. It's not only in the gall, gall bladder. It actually, it's in the liver in the tiny form, and uh, the most of the cause is from the bacteria or the virus or parasites. So you have to go to the this uh, pathogen check uh, analyze. And maybe you can find it out and you can fit with the uh, pathogens the program. Okay. Um, do you remember that I, uh, because this picture of um, 
bringing out this gold stones to eliminate these gold stones um, you you um, had really or you present really uh, impressive pictures um, and uh, you know after a visit in Penang uh, I tried it by myself and I can only uh, say it is really impressive what you can see what you can bring out <laughs> with this system uh, woo, the, this was really um, crazy and therefore i understood the question now um <laughs> not to do this um uh why are your method to to use more the bioresonance according to paul schmidt <laughs> okay <laughs> the, the bio had pushed it out <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Um, Professor Tang, thank you so much for um, your lecture. It was uh, very informative for us. Yeah. And I think um, it opens a little bit the eyes of the users around the world that we have really different, different diseases we are treating worldwide with bioresonance according to Paul Schmidt. And I think this is a very nice motivation uh, to everybody. Yes, and it shows that we are a global player. <laughs> because yeah. different kind of problems and different kind of therapies. And uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. You. Best regards uh, to your wife and uh, uh, to your kids. And hope to see you soon in Penang, in Kuala Lumpur or wherever in Malaysia. I am sure you are coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.